As children, you're welcome once again for this lesson. The teacher, Nabo Richard, in science. So before we start, our ways of work are going to be those one. For those gadgets, phones, keep them in silence. Have an open mindset as we are discussing. Listen, listen to learn. We learn, be positive and constructive. And above all that, take responsibility of your own learning. So get seated and we start off. So right, children. And we are looking at the classification of plants. Remember last time we were looking at the non-flowering plants? But today we want to switch on to look at the flowering plants. And uh, before we look at them, remember last time I left you with that simple activity. So we want to mark ourselves and see the, post, the correct answers. Let's go through them very fast. So the first question was that, as you can see, what are conifers? We said these are non-flowering plants that we produce by seeds. Hope you got it one right. Number two write any three examples of coniferous plants. Remember, we gave a number of them. So pines, podo, cedar, fir, cypress, cycad, zinco, all those examples. So if you mentioned any, of, any three of those ones, that's right. To state any two of values of conifers, we said the conifers provide soft wood timber. They act as windbreaks. They, those are some of the things there. And then question four, how do they reproduce? We said the conifers, despite being non-flowering plants, for them to reproduce by means of seeds. Question number five, how do ferns differ from pines in terms of reproduction? Ferns reproduce by means of spores, corn pines reproduce by means of seeds. Remember, a pine is a coniferous plant. And lastly, where are the seeds of coniferous plants found? This one, we said they are found in structures called cones or hard cones. Let me hope you got them right. So start off right away, children. We said we are today we are looking at the flowering plants. Hope you still remember what flowering plants are. So we are going to, to look at some of the few things there. One, before we look at that, by the end of the lesson, you should have known what a flowering plant is. Two, you'll be able to mention for me the two systems of a flowering plant. Three, identify the parts that make up each of those systems. Four, to mention the two groups of flowering plants. And lastly, their characteristics. So that's what we want to look at in these few minutes we have. So, to begin off, we want to define a flowering plant. Already you know you have the idea. We saw what a non-flowering plant is, but today we are looking at a flowering plant. And the flowering plant is just actually the opposite of a non-flowering plant. It's a plant that bears flowers and reproduces by means of seeds. Remember the non-flowering plant reproduces by, the, for them they don't bear flowers. But this flowering plant, for them they bear Flowers. So look around your compounds. Any plant you see having flowers is said to be a flowering what? Plant. Now, children, say flowering plants, uh, plants that bear flowers, which help them to produce new plants. So we have a good view diagram here of a flowering plant. Of course, there are so many out there. So if you see a plant bearing flower, then that plant is said to be a flowering what? Plant. So don't worry about this. We are going to look at the details of each of that. Now, in our next session, we want to see. What are those two systems? What are those two main parts that make up a flowering plant? So you hope you still remember them. That's how people work, remember? Can you write them down for me? Okay. So we said the flowering plants are made up of two main systems. The shoot system and the root system. Shoot system and the root what? System. And the shoot system, the system of the part of the plant that is above the ground. So any part above the ground is taken to be in the short word system. And uh, it makes up, it's made up of so many parts. Uh, it's made up of the stems, the leaves, axillary buds, the terminal buds, the fruits, the flowers, the nodes, the internodes. All those parts above the ground, they may constitute what we call the shoot system, that part that is above the ground. Then we shall look at the root system. The root system on the other side, for it's the part of the plant that grows below the ground level. So what do you think is under the, the, the ground there? So this one is comprised of the parts like that. The types of root system, that's the tap root system and the fibrous root system. We have the root airs on it. We have the root cup. We have the other roots. So those are the two systems that make up a flowering what? Plant. We have said there are two, the shoot system and the root system. And you have already known the parts that make up each of those systems. All right, children. We can as well look at our flowering plant and you see those parts we're talking about. So here we have got a diagram of our flowering plant. 
we can see the, above, uh, the part above the ground, which is colored white, it's called a short system, and the one below the ground, which is our root system. Of course, you can see several parts there. You can see the nodes. Uh, there's a part called the internodes. There is a part called, uh, we have the leaves there. We can see the beautiful flowers. We see the stem. We have the leaves. We have the, we have several buds here. We have the apical bud, sometimes we call the terminal bud. The one we see up there, it's called the apical bud or terminal bud. It actually increases the height of the plant. Then you have got another bud here between the leaf and the stem. That's called the axillary bud. And then, of course, we have other parts as you can see there. Then below there, we can see our root system. We have the main root, that's the primary root, and the other roots growing from it. So this is basically the simple structure of a flowering plant. So maybe you can also get one from the environment, then try to relate with what I have there. You'll be able to name all the parts that make up that, that plant there. Good children. Then, we can as well look at the groups of these flowering plants. How do we classify these flowering plants? We saw the non-flowering plants, how we classify them? Now today we are looking at those flowering plants. How do we group them for them? Can you remember any of those two groups of the flowering plants? I know you could be remember the only one. We can have a look at this. So, so you are saying the flowering plants are divided into two groups. They can be monocotyledonous plants or they can be dicotyledonous plants. The word must be pronounced properly, monocotyledonous. Say that one properly. And then dicotyledonous. So we have the term monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous what? Plants. So you want to see what exactly are these two groups of plants. So classification. Ah, look at that. The first one, what do you, that, what do you notice here? When you look at the first one, there are two cotyledons. That's for dicotyledonous plants. And when you come to monocotyledonous plants, you can see that there's only one cotyledon, as we are going to find out later on. So whenever you talk about the word dicotyledon, di means two. Mono means one. All right? So, so what, you start with the monocotyledonous plants. What are they exactly? And two, what are their characteristics? And probably you can also look at examples of them. You remember the word you learned about uh, monocotyledonous seeds in the P4? You remember that? So now, today we are looking at the plants. Now, don't confuse them with the seeds. So when you talk about monocotyledonous plants, what do you think they are? So quickly, we can jot something down. We let with mine here. Uh-huh, we are reading together. These are plants that produce seeds with one cotyledon. Plants that produce seeds with one cotyledon. Of course, we have several of them, including all cereals. Rice, maize, sorghum, millet, wheat, barley, oats, and many others. All those are considered to be monocotyledonous plants. Why? Because their seeds have got one cotyledon. Go children. Then, what about their characteristics? Now, these monocotyledonous plants, they have got certain characteristics. Can as well go through them. One, they develop fibrous root system. Two, they undergo hypogeal germination. That implies that the cotyledons remain underground. Then three, they have leaves with power leaf venation. We shall be looking at them. Then four, they develop seeds with only one cotyledon. So these are basically their characteristics. You can probably look at them once again. We said one, they have got fibrous root system. The fibrous root system, they are roots which don't go deep in the soil. They are just shallow roots. Then two, they undergo hypogeal. Take note of the word, hypogeal germination. So what does that mean? A type of germination where the cotyledons remain underground. Then they have leaves with power leaf venation. Then their seeds have got one cotyledon. So these are what we call the monocotyledonous plants. We shall look at them and look at more details about them. Then we can have a look at this. Aha, uh -huh, good. You can see here the fibrous root system. You can move around your compound and uproot one of the plants. Does it have this type of root system? So if you happen to be having this type of root system, this is what we call the fibrous root system. The roots don't go deep in the soil, they spread and they're uniform. Ah, so you can see that's what we're talking about there. Then we can have a look at, uh, of course we have it's been told here, there are many roots originating from the same point on the plant. Basically found in grasses and so on. Ah, this is what I've been talking about, the power leaf venation. Power lines, we learned about them in P5. These are lines that run from, which don't meet. So the same applies to this venation here. 
the veins run from the apex to the stalk and they don't meet. If you happen to see a plant around there having this kind of venation, then that plant is said to be a monocotonous plant. Uh huh. Have you seen that? Uh huh. They are moving from their stalk and they go up to the apex of the plant. And those, those veins don't meet. The word venation, to remind you, is the arrangement of the veins in a leaf. And we have got two types of venation. So this one is the power leaf venation, whereby the veins run from the stalk and go up the apex without meeting. Uh huh. So the veins run from the bottom to the top of the leaf. Good. Uh, examples of plants with power leaf venation, of course, we have sugar cane. Uh, we have got maize, we've got sorghum, we've got grass, we have millet. Actually, all the cereals I've already mentioned earlier on, all of them have got this type of venation, which is piled. And all of them are monocotonous what? Plants. Then, our next session, children, we want to look at those which are called the dicotodonous plants. Dicotodonous plants. What are they? And probably examples of them. And also look at their characteristics as well. Of course, there are going to be the opposite of that one. Uh -huh. So these are plants which develop seeds with two cotyledons. And the examples of these plants, of course, all the leguminous plants. Do you know what leguminous plants are? Plants that have got root nodules on their roots. That include the beans, the groundnuts, the peas, the soya beans, and many others. And most of the trees have got this type of uh, system here. The, most of the trees we are seeing, they are monocotonous plants there. Uh, they are characteristics. One, they have a taproot system. Secondly, their seeds have got two cotyledons. You have already seen that. Thirdly, their seeds undergo epigeal germination. Now, what does this mean? That they, their cotyledons, for them, they appear above the ground. Then, lastly, they have network leaf venation. We shall look at what we mean by network leaf venation. Aha, uh -huh. good. Look at the picture here. It's one main root which grows deep in the soil. So plants which have got this kind of root system, we say they are supposed to be under the group of flowering plants we call the dicotodonous what? Plants. So you can see clearly the root is one main root which goes deep in the soil with other small roots originating from it. We shall look at the roots and see their structures as well. Ah, uh, you see that's our main roots and so on. Uh, that's the tar, what we call the tap root system. Uh, the major root of the plant upon which other roots originate. Basically found in most perennial plants yeah, and so on. Then we look at the venation. By venation, I told you this is the arrangement of veins in, in, a, in a plant. So if we saw that one for the monocots, now we are looking at this one for the dicots. And for them, they have a network leaf venation. And what does it look like? It's like actually net. The, the, the veins are going to be arranged in such a way that they form a net. Look at this. Ah, have you seen this? Can you imagine some? Can you look at around and see some of the leaves around there? So they have this kind of venation. So the leaves are, the veins are connected together to form a network. So this kind of venation is what we call the network venation. Right, children? Good. Then, our activity I'm leaving you with, very simple activity. What are flowering plants? And two, to which group of flowering plants is a maize plant? And three, why is a bean plant referred to as a dicotonous plant? Very simple activity. So thank you for being good children. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.